Hey everyone, uh, this is Lucas from Enviral Design, and I've got another Geopix video update for you. Uh, this has a couple new features and a few other changes and updates. Uh, this is actually two updates in one, technically. Um, we're going to be treating this video as update 3359, and I'll just go over both of these together, and you can see what's new. Alright, first things first, we've got a new feature here It's pretty cool. Um, this pertains to the panel editor, and I'll just go and dive in here and show you. Uh, usually you just draw trail LEDs. Uh, what we added or um, just recently was a way to import an image plane. So you can have an image plane in the background to trace over. If you have um, a file or a picture or something, I'll go and show you with a picture of an LED panel. By the way, um, just I'm just dragging stuff from Windows Explorer. So in case you're curious, nothing fancy. So when you drag it into this uh, main grid canvas area, a new little GUI pops up over here called Image Plane. Um, you can make this various um, sizes with a scale. Um, you have an opacity slider, so you can uh, control how bright your image plane is. If you just want to be drawing on the straight image, you can do that. If you still want the grid for some reason, you uh, can do that as well. So once you have this up, you can basically just start clicking around and drawing out your LEDs in whatever fashion you must or may. Uh, this is just an example. Obviously, I have a definition for this panel uh, already made, uh, so it wouldn't make sense for me to make this again um, in a more rough way. But say you are working from a picture, say you have um, maybe an art installation or a stage, and you just light up all your pixels white and uh, just take a picture of that. You can load that picture into here and you can start tracing out various parts of your, your pixel map if you just want to do like a one-to-one -one, um, exactly like it is kind of physical map. Um, so that's one way you could use it. There's a few other things and reasons why you might want to have something to trace on. I actually had a beta tester who um, was tracing out a rather difficult, tricky shape and at the time this feature wasn't implemented, but he was asking for it. And he ended up taping a piece of paper over his monitor and using that to trace. Uh, it was pretty ingenious. I had to give it to him after that. I was just like, okay, this, this, this feature's going in because of you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, that's a fun feature. Uh, it's very useful. If you've ever done any kind of 3D work for image plane, it's kind of like a must have. So anyways, if you clear image plane, it goes away. The GUI goes away. If you drag another image into your window, you're gonna get that image, uh, opacity, all that stuff works quite fluidly. Okay, so feature update. So this is a real simple thing here. Um, well, actually, hold on, let's see. Yeah, we can go and dive, we can go and dive in over there. So, what did I lie? Um, Okay, let me go ahead and go over the rest of the updates for the panel editor and just go ahead and get out of here completely. So, uh, bug fixes, <laughs> nothing big. If you hold Q and hover over things, as you know, you get um, tool tips. I went ahead and just fixed the tool tips for a few things um, over there in the panel editor. So, that's pretty much it there. Let's go and jump over to the pixel map editor and go through the rest of the features. All right. Um, so this one here, uh, I can't really show you this since it's actually a hardware thing, uh, but I'll explain it to you. Normally when you map pixels and panels, so we've got these right here. Let me turn off auto scale. And let's just grab one of these panels, let's grab four. If we pop over to the visualizer, you can see our, um, our LEDs are all mapped and showing the animation correctly. And if we move this over here with auto scale turned off, it's, it's still up here doing its thing. Uh, however, if you move it outside the content area, if you've watched the video series, you know that this will cause your LEDs to flash. Before, it flashed um, like a fuchsia, like a pink, to let you know that you're outside of your content area. Uh, well, we've changed the color for the outside of bounds um, marker, and that's gonna be yellow now. And when you have so right now we have we have panels in one, two, and three, correct? And four has nothing plugged into it. 
Uh, well, there's nothing mapped on it, and it's assuming there's nothing plugged into it either on your microcontroller. Uh, so all of the outputs, or all the LEDs that are unmapped, essentially are going to be blinking red. Um, so in real life, it's going to look like this, but red. So if you plug uh, an LED strip or a panel into um, port 4 and it's flashing red, that's because you have nothing mapped. So it's basically telling you, hey, look, uh, there's nothing on this. Currently, all the pixels are just unassigned. And the reason I did this was before we had just a bunch of dummy pixels that would take on the color of the last LED that was mapped. And this is kind of confusing for some people. Well, they thought it was mapped and they thought there was a different problem and really they just hadn't mapped the right pin uh, or they hadn't mapped it at all. So uh, just a little visual cue that should help a lot. If it's flashing red, it's not mapped, if it's flashing yellow, it's uh, simply just outside of the content area. So that is that. All right. So geo groups. One thing that's missing from over here, there's a few things added which we'll come back to, is geo groups. Uh, if you remember geo groups here, you can actually move your geo groups around. Uh, and you can add different panels to different geo groups. You can move them independently. It's great for basic layout and stuff like that. Um, the visualizer into things. Well, this menu's been moved over here, so. If you move your mouse um, over on this side, it's very similar to here. Uh, it's a mouse over rollover thing. Uh, you've got access to your geo groups here, and now you can add up to 20 groups as well. Um, if you need more for any specific reason, let me know. Uh, but 20 is where it's capped out to now, and you've got a scroll bar, uh, so all that works pretty nice and takes up a lot less space over here. Uh, well, no space over here because we need that extra space for some other stuff, which I'll get to in a second. Um, Cool, that's just about that update. And yeah, so basically the last thing is another feature. Big feature actually, uh, it didn't take too long to implement. So let's zoom in here. We have our panels, and before you might have remembered we had this little thing that we could type in our coordinates to, 50, um, and when you have nothing selected, you, um, you you gain control of the cursor here, which you can also just drag around. So forgetting the cursor for now, uh, when you have a panel selected, we have our, our transforms, TX and TY, but we also have rotate. So previously, if you middle mouse clicked, you'd rotate the panels clockwise, and if you held shift and middle mouse click, you'd rotate it counterclockwise. Um, and you can do this with multiple panels, and you can also just force select all the panels on a pin, and you can do it that way too. Uh, but now we have a field, so you can actually go and type stuff in. So right now, uh, since these are two different um, rotations, you can just have to just type something in to overwrite it. So if I type in one and zero, it rotates, it sets them both back to zero. I can set these both to 30, uh, I can set them both to 60, 90, whatever. Um, so this works on what you have selected. And you can uh, use this in conjunction with your middle mouse click, whatever's easiest for you. Uh, if you have some funky rotation, like uh, just, you know, I don't know, 13.5, uh, you can get all that stuff keyed in manually. So um, next is scale, pretty self-explanatory. You can scale things along their local axis before rotation. Um, really great, so you don't have to make 15,000 um, different panel definitions. You can just make one and scale it for different types of abstract effects. Uh, really good if you have noise, noise patches, uh, because, let's see if we have one mapped here. Yeah, so we got this noise, right? Um, and we also have a circle. So let's say we just select all these panels that are on this pin, and we select our noise, we can swap, right? Actually, we could just do this with all of these, uh, all of these panels. 
So let's say this, this effect's just gonna be like a noise effect. Um, one thing you might wanna do is to scale these up so that they take up a bigger portion of your content. And by doing so, it'll cause more of a glitter effect that's more consistent and constant, taking up samples from the whole, whole content area. Um, which could be useful, depends what you're going for. Uh, it's a good example though. And um, just go through here. And as you can see, we have kind of chaos um, nests here in the middle of just LED lines. And there you have it. Um, so you can scale everything back down to one and you're back to normal. So you can also do really skinny stuff. So you could do 0.1 and one, which again is gonna give you some really interesting results. It depends on what kind of a uh, underlying panel you have, of course, but this is where the magic happens with these kind of crazy, weird abstract mappings. Um, anyways, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Sounds like it is. So we've done some updates to out of bounds and non map pixels, so now they're flashing, you'll see them and you'll know what color they are based on, or you'll know what status they have based on what color they're flashing. Geo groups, we have up to 20 supported now. We've got the menu on the left. Um, got rotation and scales built into the panels, and drag an image plane um, right into your. your um, your canvas. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't tried GeoPix yet, I recommend it. It's a lot of fun. You can do a lot of cool things with it, and it's very quick to use. Um, again, as always, let me know if you have bugs, questions, comments, critiques. Always happy to hear them. We're still in open beta and will be probably until end of July. So thanks a lot. Bye.